MOSFETs. How do they work? Part 2. Okay, here's the circuit. It's a very complicated circuit. It has two resistors, an LED, and a MOSFET. Oh, here, I'll do it like this. Okay, this is uh, any N channel MOSFET. I don't care what you use. IRF 830, 2N7000. Well, the 2N7000 is going to have a different pinout. IRF PG50, whatever. Any N channel MOSFET. High side switch means that the switch element is on the, the drain side of the transistor rather than on the source side, which is more common. Okay, so we have uh, the gate of this MOSFET is hooked to a 1 mega ohm resistor and then it's just sticking up in the air. The drain of the MOSFET is hooked to the anode, or I'm sorry, to the cathode of the LED. The anode is hooked to the dropping resistor of 1.7k ohms. And that's just because I have to give it enough uh, voltage here to actuate the gate. And then there's a little piece of wire over here that I can use to touch to the uh, to the resistor lead that goes to the gate. So that would send a plus gate pulse to the gate. And then it goes to the function generator. And on the drain side or the source side of the MOSFET, I just go down and then I have another little switch piece of wire configured that I can touch also to the gate resistor lead sticking up there. And then those leads are going to the function generator, which is set to produce a square wave of plus and minus about six volts or so. And I'm not using the magic function generator, I'm using the old wave tech up in there. All right. So here comes its little output lead, and it goes around and down. And then here's the actual circuit right here. Oh, pay no attention to the ring oscillator on that side of the board. Don't let it distract you. It's just a ring oscillator. There's nothing important about a ring oscillator. Okay, It's just a ring oscillator. Don't worry about it. Here's the circuit that we're talking about here. I've got the blue LED and a ping pong ball and there is a MOSFET. I think, what is that one? Is that a something? Sorry. Sorry about the light. What is that? I think that's an IRF 530 or something. And I've spread the legs out a little bit to give some clearance. And then here's the, the big old circuit. There's, uh, there's that one mega ohm resistor. There's the little sw uh, switch that I can use to touch the positive to the resistor. There's the little switch over there that I can use to touch the negative, the drain, or rather the source to the resistor by swinging it over like that, okay? I hope you can see what's going on. Now I'm, I'll just plug the LED back in. Uh, anode goes to the posit positive. Uh, right there. Okay, now oh, look, it's already flashing. So let's just take the negative over here and we'll just touch it to the gate lead. Oh, oh I got the, uh, the, 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 all right, never mind, put that in the wrong way. There we go. I had it in the wrong way. So we were actually going over the internal diode. All right, now, uh, okay, so now it's not flashing. Right, let's turn this off so it's not distracting you. You want you to be distracted. All right, now that gate resistor there is just sticking up in the air. There's nothing connected to the input side of it. The other side of it goes to the gate of the MOSFET. Okay, so I'm just going to touch that with my finger, and you see how, how the MOSFET actually already starts on. It doesn't take a lot of charge to turn a MOSFET on, especially one of these. And when I take my finger away, it stops. When I touch it again, it starts, okay? But a MOSFET is really switched, supposed to be switched, by a positive gate pulse. So that's what this is over here. Let's just swing that over to the, to the uh, pin there. 
Now you can see that the MOSFET's turning on hard. It's much, much brighter, right? So the positive pulse from the function generator is not only providing current for the LED, but it's also providing a positive voltage for that MOSFET pin. Now a lot of times, once the MOSFET pin is charged, the charge will just stay on it and the thing will keep flashing. See, the gate is on, the gate is charged, it's full of charge and it's not leaking off. There's so little current involved in turning on a MOSFET gate that it'll often stay on if you don't provide some mechanism for bleeding the charge away. So here the gate resistor is just sticking up in the air. There's nothing on it. The charge on the MOSFET gate is still there, so it's still switching. So the way to get the charge off the gate is to, to ground the, the gate. So here we'll swing the drain switch over and have it touch that pin. And now the gate charge is, is off. It, there's no more charge on the gate, so the, the MOSFET has stopped switching. It's not allow allowing the function generator signal to pass through it anymore. If I put some charge on the gate by just touching it with my finger, it starts switching again. But that's not enough charge for it to keep switching. See, it stopped when I, when I let go. There it started. Now it's got enough charge on it from those two touches, I guess, to keep switching. If I drain the charge off with the negative switch, it stops switching. If I start switching it properly with the positive switch, or the positive contact there, you see a really bright LED from the fully on switched MOSFET. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what happens is, just like in the Ainsley circuit, we have the MOSFET gate is actually in parallel with the series current flow through the load, okay? No current has to flow through the gate, it just has to be switched on by the positive going pulse. The current flows through the load, okay? but it's supplied by the function generator. It's not going through the gate. The gate is switched on and off by the function generator, but it doesn't take a lot of charge to do that. And if the charge stays on the gate, as it is now, the function generator, or rather the MOSFET keeps allowing the current to flow through it until it's removed by grounding that gate pin. Okay, thanks for watching.